마음의 문을 여소서 내 마음의 문을 열어 주보게 하소서 주보게 하소서 내 마음의 눈을 여소서 내 마음의 눈을 열어 주보게 하소서 주보게 하소서 주 이름 높이 들리고 영광의 빛 비춰주시고 권능 넘친 복이 원 안에 거룩 거룩 I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know God so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which God has called you, what are the riches of God's glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us who believe according to the working of God's great power. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. 
And seraphs were in tendance above, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, with two they flew. And one called to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory. Friends, if we say that we have no sin, we are strangers to the truth. The truth is not in us. We deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins before God, our God who is gracious and just will forgive us of those sins. Therefore, with penitent hearts, let us pray together our prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, in your presence we confess our sinfulness, our shortcomings, and our offenses against you. You alone know how often we have sinned and wandering from your ways and wasting your gifts 
in forgetting your love. Forgive us our sins and help us to sow good seeds as we seek to grow more in your likeness and image. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. And yes, Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. Do you hear that? The old life is gone. It is in the past, and a new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven, and be at peace. Amen. Our text this morning comes to us from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. Hear the word of the Lord. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore again, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, we've gathered here to place ourselves in front of your word, asking now that your spirit would carry it deep into the most protected corners of our heart. 
This we pray in the name of the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus tells another parable. A farmer planted good seed in his field. At night while he was sleeping, an enemy enemy planted weeds. When the plants came up, it was apparent that there were both wheat and weeds in the fields. Farmer's servant asked, shall we pull up the weeds? But he said no, because you would also uproot the wheat. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together, and at the harvest we'll separate them. There are a lot of weeds in the garden called our life. And we all have servants who are happy to point them out to us. We get a lot of judgment, and it lasts our whole life. We're judged by our parents and by our children, by our friends and our spouses, by the people who love us and the people who do not, by our colleagues, our teachers, our doctors, and certainly by the church. And very often the judgment is not good. Too many weeds. These are the reviews that we still have memorized. But the greatest critic of all is the person who keeps showing up in the mirror. Too many weeds. What bothers us most are not our mistakes, which we find easier to forgive. No, what really makes us crazy is the deeply rooted problems that we have, the inclinations to do that which is wrong. It's not the sin, it's the addiction to the sin that troubles us. The terrible temper that has the capacity to take off other people's heads. We hate that about ourselves. The things that we've done and left undone, the guilt that persists or the resentment at what others have done, and it just eats away at our soul, or the ever-present anxiety that mars every day of our lives. When we try to make changes, we find that these things are deeply rooted in us, and the roots are entwined around that which is good about us, and we seem stuck with ourselves. The Apostle Paul knows this struggle all too well. In Romans 7, he says, I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. I keep, I cannot do the good that I want to do, but the evil I do not want is what I keep doing. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? And then almost immediately he goes on to say, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. Notice Paul is not saying you need to do some work on your garden. He's saying thanks be to God that we have a Savior who can do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So once again it gets back to the grace of God. You do not fully understand grace if you're not at least a little bit offended by it. Because it claims that God has to do what you clearly cannot do for yourself. Like forgive you. Or change you. Or make you useful. Restore the garden that you've let go to weed. We hear often the call to engage in the mission of Christ or the call to engage in social justice. To advocate for these things are not hard. To want to do them is not hard. It's the doing that which is just which is hard. Thanks be to God 
through Jesus Christ, who frees us to do that which we cannot. This is what is core to the ministry of Jesus, to bring us this transforming grace, bringing us to not only will the right, but to do it. This summer, I received a letter from American Express. It began, Dear M. (laughs) You deserve a European vacation. (laughs) Well, not only do I not deserve a European vacation, but if American Express really knew me, it would know that the last thing I want is what I do deserve. What I want, what I need, is this grace of God that can do something about these weeds in my life. The church also has weeds. (laughs) It's the temptation of every pastor to think that the church will be fine if we can just get rid of the weedy people. (laughs) But the weeds are not leaving. They keep threatening to leave. (laughs) Why do they think that's a threat? I, I always wanted to say this is what I've been praying for. There's the door. But no, they're not leaving. The cool people leave, but not the weeds. St. Augustine used this parable in his polemic against the Donatists, who were seeking a pure church. And Augustine said, clearly, there are weeds in the church. But the body of Christ is holy not because its members are holy, only because the head of the body is holy. That is what we mean by holy church, filled with weeds, just as in each of our lives. It's the head of the body that's holy. So a pastor drives home at the end of another long, hard, and maybe even painful day And she is lamenting, who will rescue me from this body of death called the church? And then St. Paul and St. Augustine and her theological education will whisper to her, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, how is it that this grace of God in Jesus Christ rescues us? Well, as the parable goes, it clearly doesn't remove the weeds. Jesus, who told this parable, did not come to do gardening in our lives to get rid of the weeds. Jesus, as the Son of God, came to give us God so that nothing can separate us from God again, not even our sins. To receive this grace, to respond to this love of God, is to respond with all of us. This is what we mean by saying give our lives to God. You have to give your whole life, not just the wheaty part, not just the part you're proud of, not just the righteous parts. You've got to give him the things you are most ashamed of giving him. That's why we call him Savior. You've got to give him the weeds. Again, this will not free you from the presence of weeds it will free you from preoccupation with them so that you can get back to being useful. It will free you from the temptation to succumb to their power in your life because there is a Savior at work. But you've got to keep your eyes focused on the salvation of this one who's brought God to us. This is why spirituality and social action have to go hand in hand. You won't last unless you're attending to the work of the Savior in your own life. You'll keep getting distracted. You'll keep finding your life in the weeds. This is why we come to communion, for this miraculous exchange where we lay here our sins and receive Christ's righteousness. And then we leave finally enabled to follow Christ to the places of mission to which he calls us. 
This doesn't get us off the hook for our sins. Of course not. This sin still does devastation to the garden, the good garden God created. It hurts Jesus Christ. It hurts us. It certainly hurts those around us. What it does do, though, is it frees us from the overwhelming power to succumb to these sins by knowing there is a Savior at work within us. Then we get to the end of the parable, to the harvest, the hard part. The time comes when the reaping will arrive and the wheat and the weeds will be separated and the wheat will be bound up and placed in the barn and the weeds will be burned. Here it is again, judgment, judgment day. We live by, actually, our hope that a day will come when the good is no longer entwined with evil in us or in the world. But that day need not make you afraid. The real judgment day, the one that's really important, is not the one that is to come, but it is the one that already occurred 2,000 years ago on the cross of Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. If you have a commitment to this judge who is judged in our place, if you have a vision of a judge who is dying to love you, then you are free from anxiety about the judgment to come. And certainly the judgment that keeps showing up in the mirror. Free to actually be a disciple, to follow Jesus out into the world, a world that is dying for change, desperately in need of a Savior. You now get to participate in this. Now you can not only will what is right, but by the grace of God, do it. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
blessed by God's word read and preached, we come to a time of prayer. And since we last gathered as a community to worship last spring, there have been many changes. We've blessed a class of graduates. We've welcomed a new class of students. We've welcomed new faculty and staff. We've served and studied and hopefully found Sabbath rest in lingering days. We turned our faces to the skies and held cardboard glasses across our eyes and watched the moon dance with the sun. But it breaks our heart to also say that we've seen white supremacists march and we've heard and experienced escalation of hate against those of color, against the LGBT community, against women, those who are immigrants and those of other faiths. We've seen tensions escalate in the Korean Peninsula. We've seen storms tear apart the Gulf Coast of Texas, Louisiana, the Caribbean, especially St. Martin, now perhaps Florida. And even this morning, we received news about an earthquake in Mexico. So pray and pray we must. As we gather in prayer, I would just invite you to hold these things in your heart, and then I'll join us together. Let us pray. Ever-living God, we do gather here this morning in gratitude, deep gratitude for this time, this place, this community, this new season you have called us to. O oh, Holy One, we come today filled with anticipation and possibility and hope, but we also come with concern and heavy hearts for this community, this country, our world, and we offer our fervent prayers. We pray for all leaders in this world, and we pray that each and every one of us may find the ways to be justice seekers and caregivers and healers and peacemakers. And God, we pray for those in our own community who are struggling today with transition or illness or loss or loneliness. May we reach out to other, each other with love, support, and grace. And to that end, loving God, we ask for your blessings to be upon this new academic year. We thank you for all members of this community. We thank you for the president, trustees, faculty, administration, staff, and we thank you for all of our students, especially those who are new and begin classes today. With the addition of new students and new faculty and new staff, a new community has been created in this place. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to stir in our midst. And we lift our prayers to you today, knowing that you receive them as our tender mother, father, guardian, guide, and friend. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Friends, this is the holy feast of the people of God. The people of God will come from east and west, from north and south, and sit at the table of the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table, and our Savior invites all who trust in him to come and share in this sacred meal. Friends, the Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. O oh, holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and let the earth be glad. We praise you for creating the whole world and for your promises to your people Israel and for Jesus Christ in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, he shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, he saves us. 
and risen from the dead, he gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. O oh, holy God, pour out your spirit upon us and make us one with Christ and make us one with all who share this meal. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love that we may serve as your faithful disciples now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, Our Father in, in heaven, heaven hallowed be your thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, and we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the times of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive now our words of institution. Yesu Christo usikuhule aliosalitiwa, alituwa mkate, Na kisha kushukuru aka umega. Aka wapa wanafunzi wake akisema. Tuwaheni mle, huu ndiyo mwili wangu utolewa kwa ajili yenu. Fanyeni hivi kwa ukumbusha wangu. Vivyo bahada ya kula, aka kitua kikombe. Akisha kushukuru akasema. Nyweni nyote, hii ndiyo damu yangu ya gano jipia, imuagikayo kwa jili yenu na kwa watu wengi kwa msamaha wa dhambi. Fanyeni hivi kila mnyuapo kwa ukumbusho wangu. Friends, in the breaking and the bread, we find wholeness in the body of Christ. And when this cup is poured out for us, we are filled. This morning we'll be serving communion by intinction. In a moment we'll invite you to come forward up the center aisle. When you come up, the cups on the inside will have juice, the outside will have wine. There'll be gluten-free wafers on the plate and Dean White will have gluten-free cups on this side for those who might be of need. After you receive the elements, we invite you to return down the side aisles. Brothers and sisters, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Vengo a ti, Jesús amado, líbrame de mi pecado. Calma, Redentor, mi llanto, he pecado tanto, tanto. Con la sangre que vertiste, das consuelo al alma triste. Hambre, tornas en alturas, salvación me da segura. Oh Cristo, generoso tú me ofreces la salud que a los tuyos siempre das con plenitud. En tu mesa bendecida tú me das la bienvenida los misterios de tu gloria Hoy celebro en tu memoria Con tu santo cuerpo y sangre Sacias hoy de mi alma el hambre Haz que en fe, amor, constancia Frutos lleven abundancia 
O Cristo, oh Cristo, generoso tú me ofreces la salud, que a los tuyos siempre das con plenitud. Vida ofrece y paz preciosa, tu palabra poderosa, por unirse al elemento. Hacia el santo sacramento Bajo el pan y vino adquiero Cuerpo y sangre del Cordero Oh misterio tan profundo ¿Quién no entiende en este mundo? Oh Cristo Oh Cristo Generoso tú me ofreces la salud y a los tuyos siempre das con Ya mi alma tú libraste y el pecado tú quitaste Cual preludio de tu cielo, hoy me gozo en tu consuelo Cielos, tierra, noche y día, te den gracias a porfía Por tus múltiples favores, gracias mil y mil loores Oh Cristo, oh Cristo, generoso tú me ofreces la salud, que a los tuyos siempre das con plenitud. Oh Cristo, oh Cristo, generoso tú me ofreces la salud, que a los tuyos siempre das con plenitud.
us pray together. Lord God, in deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we have shared the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much of us, enable much by us, and encourage many through us as we remain rooted and grounded in love. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. We pass the peace of Christ to those around you. Peace be with you. Peace.